Hey guys, show on Solo One here, and today I have another little redstone tutorial for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at a decimal or basin counter. I use decimal because we are sadly humans, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's get straight into it. This button counts up right over here, and this is the least significant digit. It'll count up. There are 10 blocks over here, and when it hits the 10th block, it'll basically count up. So, like, this would be 9 and then 10, but there's no 10th digit in decimal. So, instead of that, we just, once it hits there, we reset this row and count up. If you want, you don't actually have to include this row, because technically speaking, you only need 9 digits, or 10 digits, I guess, but the, the 0 is when everything is attracted. But basically, I chose to keep this here, but in the same in the same manner exactly it could be like that instead. But basically let's just show this anyway. So when this hits ten, it'll count up and this row will extend by one and I've already brought it up to nine, so this would actually be ninety. And then once it hits here it would count up one in this digit, which is the hundreds, and it's already in one hundred, so right now it would be one hundred and ninety five. So let's continue counting up here. Let's take a look at this in action. It's pretty fast. Not too much latency. There we go. As you can see, it's not insta-carry. It does take a little bit for the carry to go through, but, you know, it shouldn't be take too long. It, even if you have, like, I don't know, eight digits, but I don't really know why you would need eight digits. But yes, this is a very simple decimal counter, and like I said, it could be used for any base end, so you could use octal, uh, binary even, but this will be kind of redundant for binary. You can use octal, you can use, um, I don't know, dozen all, whatever you want, whatever base end system you count in. And for now, let's get straight into the tutorial. Nice looking redstone right here, huh? Alright guys, so again, we're going to do this tutorial for the decimal version, but you can use any base end version, and I'll explain how at the end. But let's just get started. So what you want to do is decide where your actual display is going to be and build five blocks of your display block. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, one too many. And then place just some sort of block that's similar to your display block but is different, is distinguishable, I guess. So we're going to do this chiseled sandstone. Then we place, we're going to place four more, one, two, three, four. Then another one of these and another one of your main display blocks. Now we're going to decide how many digits you want your decimal counter to have. I'm going to do two digits, but for every digit you have, go up two blocks. So two digits, two blocks each, that's four blocks, so that's one, two, three, four, right there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here with one block space, and you might want to keep the layout with the special block and then close it off on this side, and just repeat it all over again. Alright, now you want to come around behind your display and you want to go back one, two, three blocks, take out these two, and take out that one, and then go ten blocks over here just so you have a nice area, a nice easy area where you can place your sticky pistons facing in the direction of the display, of course, and just do that for all your digits, and you can get rid of these blocks after you've done that. So, let's build this up and place all our sticky pistons like that and get rid of this row. Once you've done that you can come down to the front and place your display block or not display block, your counter display, whatever, just do this thing like that. Alright guys, are you ready for the fun part? I am. Start doing the redstone. So from wherever your pistons are, go back one block like that and then place blocks all around behind your pistons and then do that for every digit you have and on the face of those blocks facing the pistons just place redstone torches all over the place and once again do that for all your digits and then take redstone and put it on top of those blocks again for all your digits okay so now that we've got our, all our digits in place what we want to do is start working on the individual layers for the individual digits so what you want to do is come right to the left side it's the left side if you want it to go from left to right. It's the right side if you want it to go otherwise. But I'm just going to do it from the left side. So what you want to do is place blocks like this, and then place a block there and there. And place a block right there. And blocks going like that. More blocks going like that. More blocks. And more blocks. And you want to make sure that's a half slab right there. Then you get your redstone in all of these positions there, there, and there. 
and finally get comparators one here on subtraction mode, another one here one here on subtraction mode and another one here and another comparator right there and then get a repeater in place right there and put a, furn oh, a furnace right here with a stack of any items of your choice then you will want to place a redstone torch right here and if you did everything correctly this should light up and if you just take a block right out of here you'll see it's turned off so it's supposed to reach up right up to here so you might have guessed it this furnace is what determines what base in it would be one stack means decimal and the way it works is basically you get your furnace and your comparator output and for the amount of blocks that the signal strength goes from the furnace output is the well 15 minus that number is the base end that you're going to be using so if you want to be using I don't know base 8 octal then that would mean that you would need a signal strength of 7 here if you would be using dozen old then you would need a signal strength of 3 and so on okay so now that we have the base circuit in place and we've determined what base end we're going to be counting in what we want to do is make the actual counting circuit so you, from this comparator you want to go back three blocks and place a sticky piston facing in the direction of it you can get rid of these blocks now and what you want to do is come around back to this to this piston and place a block down from it like that place blocks like so and then go down a block like that and place redstone in all of these positions place a comparator here on subtraction mode and a repeater here on three ticks now you'll want to repeat that for every layer, so I'm just going to do this here real quick. So, do the exact same thing once again, just like that. And on the next levels, except for the first one can be a normal block, but on the next layers you want to use slabs like that. So, redstone and repeater here on three ticks and comparator in subtraction mode. Then you just want to connect this right up like, like, uh, like that, bring the block up, and there you go. So you can see that the reset line over here also has the carry over to the next bit, which is above it, obviously. And we use these half slabs to make it go up uh, without intervening with the previous layers. So now we just want to quickly build another memory cell and another copy of the main circuit over here, basically. Uh, so we're going to do that real quick. Okay, now once you've done that, you might be able to notice that this redstone over here is connected with this line. So what you want to do is just cut it off. And if you build more layers, then this is the block identical to this one so that this is your carry line. But if this is the last layer, then you just want to place a single block over here to cut off this redstone, and you should be good. Now, a little note I didn't really point out before is once you place this torch, then this thing is basically armed before. It's just a bunch of redstone things. But once you place this torch, it's armed, as you can see. Now here's the interesting part. You're probably wondering what you're going to place in front of these ticky pistons. Well, cauldrons. Cauldrons are a very nice way to get a signal strength output, basically a redstone signal, and having a movable block to get a redstone signal. But unlike the redstone block, it doesn't power a redstone line next to it if you don't want it to. So what you want to do is place cauldrons in front of all of the sticky pistons and fill them up with water and then get a glass bottle or if you're in survival several glass bottles and just take two bits out of this out of every cauldron. If you take three it'll just be empty so you want to make sure you only take two. In survival I guess you could just use one and then drink the water. It doesn't do anything. But yeah just take two doses of water out of each of the cauldrons so it has a signal strength of one which will subtract one from this line every single time that these, uh, this piston is powered and that is you basically done so now you can get your input hooked up and I'm just gonna put a button straight up here but you could always just use something automatic like for example I was originally planning to use this for a for the arena that I'm working on with Ben or aka Shizuma and Nice Seventh on the Japocraft server I'm still gonna use this design over there but basically yeah, you just get your input line hooked up to the bottom most monostable circuit over here that's connected to this piston. As you can see, obviously this doesn't have any other input. Um, and because of because you're hooking it up to this and it doesn't have any other input, then you could just move it over 
to right over here if you want. It is a little more compact and much nicer. So I'm just going to rebuild it over here and hook up the redstone like that and then this all should work. Now if you're debugging this then you could place a block in front of the cauldron to make this go a lot faster and that's just what I'm doing right over here so I want to test out the carry, make sure the carry works. So as you can see it's up to 9 now once it ticks over to 10 it'll basically count this up or it's supposed to anyway so let's test that out right now and there you go it resets and counts up. Now there's another little thing I want to point out and that is the way you make the reset line for this whole thing. So if you count it up for a little bit and you're satisfied and you want to reset this then what you do is you basically you just need to power all these bits of redstone with a signal strength of 15. It's very important that the signal strength here is 15 that's why we use repeaters over here as well but um, if it's just two then it's pretty easy you can just hook a button over here or if you have a line of redstone, just hook up a repeater, a repeater like that, and you know it'll work. So just take a look at that right there, and it's reset. But um, if you have multiple layers of this, oh, if you have multiple layers of this, then that's not really going to work. So what you want to do is place blocks like that for you know every layer you have, and then place a repeater in front of those, and then take half slabs with a signal like that and just put redstone on all of those and that is basically your reset line. You just gotta power one of these blocks like that and it should reset everything at the same time and have it with a signal strength of 15. Uh, if you do have a lot of digits then you just want to quickly make sure that the signal strength is strong enough to go up because remember a redstone signal can only go for 15 blocks um, but yeah, other than that, that is your reset line. And you might be asking yourself, what use could this possibly have? So one use I already told you is for a counter in a mini game, and it's very survival friendly to build this thing. Not too many resources, and it's all possible in survival. Very simple. Um, so yeah, survival friendly type of counter that has a very large capability. But otherwise, say if you're a server owner, for example, one thing you can do with this is instead of pistons over here and instead of a display in front of each of these uh, redstone torches just have a command block saying a certain number of day or you could hook it up to something more complicated but basically hook this up to command blocks and put a daylight sensor right above here and then every time a new day rises then it'll count up and that could be useful in many ways. I don't know if you want to broadcast what day it is to the whole server or if you want to count something up or I don't even know but this is useful with daylight sensors uh, and I'm sure it has a lot of other uses but there you go. Decimal or basin counter survival friendly redstone tutorial right there for you guys. Any more title words? I don't know. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and hope you enjoyed. I really think that this is a very useful circuit. I hope you can make use of this, and I hope it's not too difficult to follow this tutorial. And if you did enjoy, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So I'm going to do this for the first time here. I've never done this before. But I'm going to say, let's try and aim for 10 likes. Can we do that, guys? Can we do 10 likes? Redstone tutorial, my possibly my most popular type of video. Alright, let's try and do that. 10 likes. See you guys there. Bye-bye.